Karen Bride for MMA Heat. I'm here with Ramsey Nijem, and you are victorious tonight here at UFC 137. How'd you feel about the fight? I feel great. You know, I went in there, I did exactly what I wanted to do. Uh, kept a level head, uh, don't want to dominate every single position, and I felt like I did. Everybody talks about how tough Danny is and how hard it is to finish him. Yeah. You just experienced that, huh? I just experienced that. was the hardest, tough nose kid I've ever fought in my life. Uh, there was three or four chokes I had underneath his chin with my legs in and him flattened out. And I mean, he just, some, my arms were getting tired before he was running out of oxygen. I mean, I was on his back like a bunch and beating him up. And I mean, I was elbowing body, head, and he was bleeding. There's, I mean, I was just like, and John's like, hey, you're having fun, Hackleman. You know, and my coach is like, you guys are doing it. I'm like, don't worry, the finish, will the finish will come. Just relax, and he'll come. I was like, all right. I was like, man, my arms are getting tired. I'm trying to choke this guy out. So, But, you know, it was a good performance for me. I feel good about it. No, it definitely was. But I do wonder, yeah, what goes through your head? It's, is it one of those, will you die already? Yeah, yeah. It was kind of like, holy crap, is this guy? I'm like, I mean, what is he here for? <laughs> so it was, it was definitely... Uh, I mean, I, was, I never got the, you know, discouraged because I was on top winning. So it's kind of like, but I was just like, come on, dude, just give me the tap, please. So let's talk about what, like you just mentioned, what John was telling you between rounds. Was there anything that he thought you needed to adjust in order to get that finish? Um, you know, John, uh, he's an amazing coach, but he does mostly my stand-up. And uh, Jason Merlick's my 4-7 jiu-jitsu, he's my jiu-jitsu coach. And so... Um, when he, he was making the adjustments on the finish the ground and then Hackleman's, you know, telling me the adjustments that I need to do on my feet. So that's why, I mean, I feel like I've made leaps and get bounds. I have two of the best coaches at what they do. So, and they work great together. You know, they, we're all a pit family. You know, we were up in Utah, pit elevated. And so I go between two camps and one's an amazing stand-up camp and one's a ground and wrestling camp. So, so, you know, Jason was, you know, he was trying to give me, you know, the pointers and the adjustments and then Hackleman was giving me the pointers and adjustments on my feet. So, but really the, between rounds, they were saying, you're winning, you're doing great. Another big round, uh, you're having fun, right? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, this is what you want to do. And I was like, yep. And they're like, all right, go out there and have some fun. I was like, okay, I will. <laughs> now, you did uh, not win the ultimate fighter. Tony Ferguson was able to defeat you. Would you like another shot at him? And, and how do you feel you've changed since the show? I mean, I would love another shot at Tony, you know, and it's, uh, I definitely didn't fight my fight against him. And, and I think you saw tonight, that's my fight, you know, in your face, 15 minutes of a grind. And I didn't do that against Tony. So, I mean, I would love another shot at him, but, you know, I, I, I learned a lot from that. I, I spent a lot of time uh, looking in, uh, you know, myself and realized, you know, part of the problem I lost at fights because I let my pride get to me and, you know, my uh, ego. And so I decided, you know, Tony won that fight and it's because of my ego. And so, you know, he beat me and, you know, I wish all the success for him and hope he has a great career. And if I get to fight him again, great, but I'm not going to go around you know, yelling and screaming and crying like, I need to fight him again. But if they want to give me that chance, I would, I would appreciate it. <laughs> now, if they did, would you wear the same outfit to the weigh-ins? <laughs> you, you wore something pretty special to 137. Yeah, you know, I, I think I'll mix it up. You know, you can't, you can't be a one-trick pony, right? Yeah, yeah, I mean, this is the this is big league. So, you know, I don't know. That was just kind of like, it was more of a, I got that, that was my Halloween costume. That's what I'm going to be wearing tonight for Halloween. And then I was like, no, it'd be funny to wear it to the weigh-ins. And then John was like, yeah, that would be hilarious. And Jason's like, that'd be funny. And then I almost didn't do it because I was cutting weight and I was tired. And, you know, like, you're just like, oh, God, I don't want to do it. But then I was like, wait, this is going to be hilarious later. I'm like, suck it up, and, you know, told myself. So I was like, put it on. I had cufflings, actually, too. <laughs> But they broke because they're like cheap right. costume ones. And I was putting them on in line and they broke. because like, ah, shit. I was like, well, I'll just go with the bow tie. <laughs> It worked. Yeah, I think it, I think it has still had the same effect. Yeah, it was nice. It was nice. Well, congratulations. Great win. Thank you. Thank you. Appreciate it. Nice talking to you.